Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I want to talk a little bit about crowdfunding and the pitfalls of backing projects. Now, most people putting up a project somewhere like Kickstarter or Indiegogo are generally honest and they're not intending to rip people off. Uh, so uh, I need to be clear about that up front, that most people are generally honest and they're not trying to take you for a ride. So. Uh, backing a reasonable uh, uh, crowdfunding uh, campaign is probably not, uh, not necessarily uh, something that you should avoid like the plague. However, uh, you need to understand that when you back a crowdfunding campaign, you are not entering into a purchase agreement of any kind. You're not you're not entering into a pre-order arrangement where if the product is not shipped you get a refund. It is not a pre-order no matter what the uh, campaign actually is. Um, and this is where a lot of people go wrong when they're investing in a lot of these uh, um, these campaigns. They, they treat it like a pre-order where uh, they're going to uh, get a product and in, in their mind because they're likening it to a pre-order they have this notion in their mind that they're entitled to their money back if the thing doesn't ship. That's not how it works. It's more akin to an investment in a startup where the startup could fail. You could lose your money uh, and not get anything in return. And you need to understand that this is what it is. And if you instead, in your mind, treat it as a donation to a project instead of as a pre-order, then you'll understand the, uh, the actual mechanics a lot better. Think of it if you've seen these PBS fundraising campaigns where they'll offer a gift for a donation of a certain level. Uh, for for those um, those campaigns are basically it's it's basically that uh, the PBS f uh, fundraising drives uh, campaigns are a crowdfunding uh, uh, mechanism. Uh, it's crowdfunding uh, old school. Uh, you know pledge drives on uh, on television. Uh, stations back in the day or radio stations or, or what have you uh, are exactly that. They're crowdfunding. Uh, you know, fundraising for charities, uh, charitable events and so on. Uh, you know, those are crowdfunding. The difference though is that those are usually for recognized charities uh, and uh, or other organizations that have specific uh, regulation behind them and they have to ha report financials appropriately and things like that. Crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter or Indiegogo or what have you, they're not in that same league. Anybody can put up a Kickstarter campaign and if enough people somehow back it and it reaches its funding goal in the required time frame, then whoever put that project up on Kickstarter gets the money and they don't have to give it back if they fail in their project. That's, a, that's an important thing. Uh, just like you give money to PBS, if they don't put the show up that you want them to, you don't get your money back. It's the same idea, except there's no oversight to make sure there's no fraud going on. And a lot of these uh, crowdfunding campaigns like Kickstarter or Indiegogo are pretty low profile. So uh, law enforcement and so on isn't likely going to notice if something goes off the rails there. Now, uh, that is where crowdfunding has been getting a bit of a black eye lately or it will when all of the dust settles on, on certain, uh, uh, certain fairly high profile uh, campaigns that have been going on in the past few years. I'm not saying that crowdfunding itself will go away or that it should or that it's a bad thing. 
What I'm saying is that you need to be wary of the claims made by these uh, these um, uh, these people that are putting up these these uh, uh, campaigns. Uh, like we could take a look at a couple of uh, of recent ones that got hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, you know in, in crowdfunding. Uh, uh, revenue, and yet the project can be shown to be completely impossible uh, with uh, some relatively simple thought and uh, and application of well understood science. Now it's always possible that somebody with some wingnut ideas onto something, and they may actually end up delivering something useful or something close to what they uh, they say they will or something like that or maybe uh, they'll they'll end up coming up with something novel that's not what they intended to but also turns out to be uh, to be uh, you know useful or something like that but that's not normally going to be what happens and you should consider this when you're considering backing a project I'm going to call out a couple of specific projects here uh, one is and you've probably heard of this one since the likes of Nathan Fillion were hawking it, uh, solar freaking roadways, which is bullshit. Uh, the whole idea behind solar roadways was that you would pave over all of the roads and parking lots and bike paths and sidewalks and what have you with these uh, hexagonal interlocking, don't go there, uh, solar panels. Um, and they're going to be smart and they'll uh, talk to each other and they'll report when one fails and, and you, you can just, you know, plop them down and uh, one fails, you can take it out, put a new one in and, and these things will have LEDs in them that'll light up and they can be the lines on the road and uh, they'll uh, take uh, solar energy and uh, that'll run the lights in them and that solar energy will also be used to melt snow and then that uh, solar energy will also be used to send electricity to the power grid. Now, uh, if you do even some really basic thinking about it and you have a basic understanding of solar, uh, of photoelectric uh, solar power, you know that uh, solar panels need to be at, a, at a, an optimal angle uh, and pointed at the sun to, uh, and to uh, uh, provide maximum power output. And if you have a basic understanding of, uh, and this is high school physics, uh, of how much energy it takes to melt ice, uh, or even how much energy it takes to heat water up one degree, uh, you understand that uh, this is not going to be a practical way of controlling snow on roads, unless you're just getting a tiny skiff of it once in a while. And here's, here's the other thing, uh, even if you don't understand that, you probably understand that you don't get power out of a solar cell when it's not in the sun, when it's shadowed, right? So these solar roadways are not going to be generating any power at night, right, when the sun's not up. They're not going to generate any power when a car is on top of them blocking the sun, uh, they're not going to generate any power or very little when there's two inches of snow on top of them after a snowstorm. Uh, so there's all these situations where they're not going to generate power. And then if you come, come down to it uh, and, and you get more into the science, they're going to be flat on the ground, so they're going to have less efficiency. Uh, and then you start looking at the cost of the photo... Uh, photo cells and the uh, material to make uh, make them sturdy enough that you can drive trucks across them and things like that uh, and how it has to be transparent so that the uh, the light can get to the uh, solar cells 
and then take a look at what is driving along the roads and take a look at the tires in your car and see all of the little stones that accumulate in there uh, randomly and then take a look at uh, just how much things are going to get scratched up by that type of thing. And then uh, consider you've got stuff blowing around in the wind, you, you know, what if there's a car crash that's going to damage them. Uh, and then when, when you really get down to it, you start realizing that, okay, so your transparent surface is going to get scratched up. That's going to block light. Cars going over top of it is going to block light. Uh, there's not going to be any light at night. Snow on top of it is going to block light. Um, so you've got all of that. And then, uh, you know, even if by some miracle this does manage to produce enough power to run the, the LEDs, uh, how much power do you have to put into a light to make it visible in broad daylight? Uh, if you consider how much light is coming in from the sun and how much light has to come out of something to light it up so you can see it in the daylight. You don't have to think too hard about this. You know how hard it is to read your smartphone in bright light, you know, like when the sun's on it. You can't read it. So, uh, you know, if you think it through, that solar roadways cannot work unless they've somehow discovered some sort of science that is completely unknown. And here's the thing, they claimed that they already had these things. So if they already had these things functional, like even a remotely functional prototype, then they could, sh they could shut up all of the naysayers and simply show it. Show us something that works. And if they did that, they wouldn't need a crowdfunding campaign to fund their uh, development on this stuff. And then you fast forward a bit and you see their, their um, demo installations on a sidewalk, no less, is maybe almost functional, yet there's no evidence that it's actually generated any power or anything like that. So... Uh, solar roadways, crowdfunding campaign, and it's bullshit because the, you, you know, and I'm reasonably sure that the, the uh, purveyors of it understand that what they're, they're trying to do is also bullshit. But on the off chance that they don't, or they didn't when they started, uh, you know, they really need to cut the losses and stop with it. And then there's a couple of uh, campaigns uh, that are trying to get water uh, for basically nothing. Uh, one is, uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, is uh, uh, supposed, oh, the water seer uh, is supposed to, you know, you drop something in the ground and the wind goes by and turns a fan and then it takes air down in the ground cools it, condenses water out, and then you get an unlimited supply of clean drinking water. And then there's the Fontas self-filling water bottle, which is a solar-powered uh, scheme for condensing water out of the air and filling a water bottle. Both of them make basically the same claim that they can get basically an unending stream of uh, water out of the air in areas where water is scarce. Now, uh, in both cases, the basic science for condensing water is right. Uh, you cool the air below or to or below the dew point and water will condense out. That part sounds but they both have fundamental flaws. Uh, one of which is the places that would really need these types of things don't have a lot of water. Uh, and as a result, there's not a lot of water in the air either. So uh, getting water out of air that's got 10% humidity, well, you're almost certainly not going to cool enough by throwing it in the ground to get any significant water out if you get any at all. And even if you do, when you cool the air, that heat has to go somewhere. 
And guess where it goes? If you're doing it in the ground, it goes into the ground, right? And eventually the ground will heat up and you'll have equilibrium. And then you're not going to get any cooling whatsoever and you won't get any water out of the air anyway, even if you had high humidity. And if you had high humidity, uh, you probably have lots of water around if you have this on a regular basis. So you don't need a condenser to get water. Uh, you can use more conventional ways like pulling it out of the river or out of a well or something like that and then treating it. And that would be a lot cheaper and certainly more reliable. And uh, so, but this is basically uh, the idea is it's a, a wind powered uh, dehumidifier using the ground as a heat sink. Um, the Fontus is basically a solar powered uh, dehumidifier and uh, that has the same issue with the, uh, with the uh, uh, humidity in the air. And uh, you know, neither one of them is going to be able to deliver on their claims. Um, and it doesn't take much to understand why. Um, but they all, all three of these projects, they had slick marketing campaigns, slick presentations. You get celebrities on board. Um, the Fontas, you know, that, this is an idea from design students, not science students. So it's not surprising that they had a bad idea that can't work because they're not science types and they don't understand why this hasn't been done before. Um, they just uh, looked at the uh, condensation on their uh, their uh, uh, you know iced coffee uh, uh, cup and said, oh we can get water out of the air and okay fine maybe you can when you've got humidity and you've got a heat heat sink somewhere but it's not going to work so <clears throat> you've got these these uh, campaigns where they, they you know some of them and there, there's others uh, out there that are just as ludicrous and it doesn't take much searching to find them really uh, and they do keep popping up but it's hard to get funding for this type of thing from established funding sources Although some of these have been able to, some of them have had government funding, and that's that's terrifying. Um, but it does show you that you need to be skeptical of the claims of anybody with, that's looking for your money, uh, whether it's in a crowdfunding uh, environment like Kickstarter, or Indiegogo, or somewhere else. Um, and, you know, while venture capitalist types, they're risking a lot more. They're a lot more careful with where they invest. Uh, the general public doesn't really have that level of savvy at this point in time. So they're not actually being careful. They, they'll, they'll more easily be taken in by a slick advertising campaign at this point in time. So these... Uh, these uh, shysters, uh, and I think some of these people really are uh, out to take you for your money, uh, they're, they're not going away, but they're having an easier time of it than they probably will in, say, 20 years. Uh, but I actually believe that a large number of these people putting out these, uh, these projects that just can't work they honestly don't know any better. They don't understand that they what they want to do can't work. And I think the Fontas people are probably in that category. And uh, maybe the Water Seer people are as well. It's, it's hard to say. Uh, but, you know, uh, we, it, it, we can't have gatekeepers preventing this sort of thing from going out there because we'll stop the uh, projects that are being shut out by the establishment uh, but actually do have merit. And that's the benefit that these uh, crowdfunding campaigns have. And they also have the benefit that small special interest type projects can get funded by the people who are interested in it without having to go through all the complicated uh, funding models and so on and expensive prospectuses and all of that stuff to collect money. And it allows people to connect over the interwebs where they don't necessarily even have to be in the same town or country, right? So there's benefits to the crowdfunding model 
just as there are uh, dangers for the people that are putting their money into it. So you need to be careful when you're when you're thinking of backing a project. Think about it carefully. Is it something that is plausible? Um, now, if it's a project that your buddy is doing or something like that, well, maybe you, you can trust them. You have some inside information or, or something like that. Um, and I, I, I know one uh, project uh, that, uh, uh, that a family member backed uh, was uh, completely legitimate. Now, it was late in uh, shipping its uh, uh, reward, but... Uh, it was a real product in the end, and the product worked exactly as they said it would. Now, it was also an iterative improvement over an existing product. So they had a real product already that they could show operating. And it turns out the product really does work exactly as they said it does. Uh, and it was not wasted money to back it. Uh, and I backed another project as a means of uh, supporting uh, uh, an artist whose work I quite enjoy. So, you know, sometimes it's not about, um, uh, you, you know, the specific projects or the merits of it, but most of the time you really do need to consider those. You need to look at it skeptically. If you're coming across a project, a third-party project, and you're thinking about backing it because a celebrity like Nathan Fillion has endorsed it or something like that, you need to do your own research and make sure that it makes sense. You need to be careful. You can't just go, oh, some big celebrity says it's cool, so it must be good. And you also can't fall for their slick marketing campaign. You need to be skeptical of anything they provide in their material. You want to look for independent third-party analyses. And you want to be skeptical of those to a level as well, because a lot of these things will tend to uh, not be researched particularly well. Uh, uh, was it uh, one of the big uh, big magazines in uh, the states? Uh, I think uh, Popular Mechanics or something like that actually got taken in by the Water Seer, if I recall correctly. So uh, you do need to take anything that people are telling you with a grain or two of salt. Uh, do your own independent research and thinking. If they're talking about some scientific principle, do the research. Find out if that principle would apply. Look for the problems with it. And then see if they've talked about how they intend to deal with those problems or something like that. And make sure, and here's the biggest part, if you're going to back something anyway, even if you're a little bit skeptical about it, even if you're not, but if you're going to back something, make sure you do it with money that you don't need. Make sure it's money you can afford to lose. Don't go racking up your credit card to back some project just because it looks cool. Uh, make sure it's money you can afford to lose. Same as if you're going to buy a lottery ticket or go gambling in Vegas. Make sure it's money you can afford to lose. If you do that, you'll have a lot less strain when a project fails. Um, and that's especially the case when you back a project on something like Indiegogo where people get the money, right? Uh, even if it doesn't hit its goals. I think Indiegogo works that way. Uh, Kickstarter, it has to meet its goal before it gets funded. But uh, if you back a project that looks like it's going to hit its goal or is going to get the money anyway, make sure that you can afford to spend that money. Uh, make sure it's not you're not relying on some return on that investment to make ends meet. That's the key for investing or gambling or playing or buying anything. Make sure that it's money you can afford to lose. And that is really important to consider, especially with crowdfunding a project being run by somebody you do not know. 
Anyway, uh, that's probably enough rambling on that for now. Uh, I had thought about talking about uh, you know some other projects that are out there that aren't being crowdfunded, but uh, I figured this video has run long enough, so so there you go. And in case you missed it, uh, because I kind of buried it in the middle there, uh, Solar Roadways, Fontus, and Water Seer are all bullshit. They cannot work. Do not fall for them. Anyway, uh, that's all uh, for this time. If you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and uh, enable notifications. Uh, if you liked the video, or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike as you see fit. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.